Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So this video you're about to see on YouTube is a free preview of my course on Timeleaf and the Spring Framework, how they work together. If you like what you see in this series, head over to my website at springframework.guru and you can learn more about the full course. Hey guys, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So in this module, we're going to take a look at adding CDN resources. So CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And what there is, it's uh, CDNs that are around the world and they pre-position resources closer to customers. So if you're a big global company and your servers are in Idaho and you have customers in England, you use a CDN. So the big stuff is near them. And we can piggyback on these CDN networks because a lot of them do have open source content that we can utilize. And Bootstrap CSS is open source. So this is going to be a, a handy way for us to take our index page, our index HTML, and we're going to utilize a CDN resource. And that, what that's going to do is tell the browser, go get Bootstrap from the CDN URL and, and bring it in and use it to render the page. So even though we are going to be running this HTML page on our file system locally, and the browser is going to be reading it locally. The CDN tag says, hey, go out here to the server and pull down the CSS or JavaScript resources from the server over here and use it to render the page. And we're going to take advantage of that here so we can, can use Bootstrap without having external Bootstrap resources on our file system. We're going to use the, the CDN. So I'm going to show you how to set that up right now using the index page. Okay, I have our index page. This is our index.html. Nothing new here. Same thing that we had before. I'm going to toggle over and, and take a look at it in Chrome. So this is how it, it displays. This is the page that that index page is creating. So I'm going to go over and add the CDN to it. And I'm going to cheat because I have this over on another screen. And the the link for the CSS belongs up in the in the header. So we're, we're going to add that. And this gives us the, the Bootstrap CSS. And I'm also going to bring in jQuery for that as well. I'm going to plunk that in right here. Oop. And I missed a tag. So we just need to... So now everything's happy again. So this brings in those two CDN resources. So you can see this pointing to a URL, httpcdn.jsdeliver.net. So it's going to bring in those resources. And I'm going to toggle over to the browser now in Chrome and click on refresh and we'll see some slight changes. So see how this has changed now? I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. So that, that's pretty close to the edge there. So we can see how it was before. This is how Chrome loads it by default. And this is how it loads with the Bootstrap styling. So we can see that the fonts changed, some of the spacing has changed. Bootstrap is definitely taking effect. So toggle between the two. This is without Bootstrap. This is with Bootstrap. So we can see some changes there. And I'll tell you why, why that is. Now we're seeing the changes, the, the differences there between just plain old Chrome and the Bootstrap styling, because it, this goes back to uh, older days of web development when you had multiple browsers, especially Internet Explorer, which just, if anybody's been doing web development for a while, they can attest that Internet Explorer was its own beast to deal with, and then everybody else was more standards compliant than Internet Explorer was. And what happened was that all the browsers had their own interpretations of how to style elements. And for a long time in web development, a lot of the CSS frameworks would include a normalize directive for CSS. And what normalize would do, it would take and like apply common adjustments to get the different browsers to look the same. And this is for the cross-browser compatibility. Today, in, in modern web development, modern browsers, and, and this, this time, it's a lot better. It's much, much better. Ten years ago, it, it was a, a real, real headache. Microsoft dominated the market, and Microsoft wanted to be the de facto standard, and, and it was for a long time. And 
it, that has dramatically changed. And now it, it's Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. And underneath the covers, those run very similar rendering engines. So you don't have the diversity in, in how pages are rendered that you did in the past. What's happening there, just remember that a lot of the major CSS frameworks are going to apply some type of CSS reset that used to be a separate CSS file that you would include, especially in Bootstrap, older versions of Bootstrap, you'll see a separate reset CSS. That's now included within the, the common CSS, the minimized CSS, which I included. So we are getting that reset functionality so that those CSS rules will make uh, cross browser com compatibility so you don't have something looking nice in one browser and then like it looks great in Firefox and but it looks lousy in Chrome or vice versa. By doing that reset, that reduces the cross browser issues that you'll see. Now, it, and including these CDN resources, we are creating a dependency on an external web resource. This is going to be great for local dev. But what we want to do in the future, that we'll do this in a, a future module, is we'll set this up so that the resources are pro being provided by Spring and Tomcat, and we'll, we'll have a URL for those so we're not going outside our application. So this is something that we'd want to do as a deployment strategy, not rely on a, a CD, an external CDN network, but rely on our own resources. And in a, a future module, I'm going to show you how to set that up. And I'll show you how we can set that up so when we're running locally from the file in the browser, we'll use the CDN resource. But when we're using Timeleaf, we'll use the, the resource from, from the Spring directory. So it, it'll render one or the other, depending on how we do it. If we're reading the file from the local file system in the browser, it'll use a CDN. But if we're requesting that from the Spring MVC application, but we'll get the other one, the other UL, the resource from our application, not the CDN.